right here it is, that big massive one inch thick, one inch thick plate um, guillotine tool with the adjustable stop here. This is a three quarter by ten, I think they call it a tap bolt because the threads go all the way up to the head. I wanted that so you could screw it clear out to here and if you wanted to you could take the this nut off and screw it right up against this or take it completely out and give you that much room in there. If, and there's a little bit more here that you could run this out to about there. And I bought unplated nuts so that I could weld the nut in here and then I've got a plated a bolt with a plated nut here. If for some reason you needed to get a little farther out, all you got to do is buy a three-quarter ten uh, bolt, take this one out and put the longer one in there, and it wouldn't need to have all these threads because you're wanting it to clear out. What I'm going to do today, I don't know how long it takes to build this, and my time is becoming very valuable. So I need to figure out how much time I've got invested in welding one of these together. What I'm going to do today is probably just weld this to the bottom and put the nut in there. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight more that I can make. So uh, I'm going to wheel my welding table outside because I don't need all that smoke in here. And uh, we're going to get busy doing a time study, I guess you could call it. These are, your dies are one inch by three inch. And I just welded two pieces of a three quarter inch round 4140 down here. So you've got 4140 dies. You're hitting uh, 1018 coal roll steel. So yes, the top will possibly ding up unless you welded another three-quarter inch round 4140 on the top. And I saw someone do that. They suggested doing that because it wouldn't ding up your die as fast. You could just cut that off and put a new one on top. Let's get busy. Right there is the stack of all the, the, the guillotine tools. I drilled these half inch holes in here so that that's going to be in the center of your lower die. If you get a die stuck, you can tip it over and run a punch up in there and knock it out. I didn't do that on this first one I built. And as I was welding it together, that die that I used to keep them both in alignment. You know how when you weld things it pulls and twists. It almost got stuck but I was able to, after it cooled off, I was able to pull it out of there. this 
so it's flush across here, so I can tell when it's setting down in there, right? Try to get it as close to perfect as I can because I know it's not going to stay that way once I start welding on it. But it should be uh, plenty close enough once we're all done. Where's my welding helmet? Plenty close enough when we're all done. Good blacksmithing work. Now I'm going to spray this anti splatter all over everything because I like to see it without all those little beads stuck. and then we'll go to town. Both sides welded, let's get it out of the jig. Now we're going to lay it on the floor and get this in here. We're going to lay it on the side. There you can see how I welded the uh, the inside of the the bottom there. It's not exactly a plug weld, but it's kind of like that, I guess. I don't know. Welded all the way around on the bottom, and then it'll be welded on the top. Or it is welded on the top. Let me flip it up, and I'll show you. There's the weld there on the one side. You can see there's some BBs there, but because I sprayed it, they just wipe right off. Nice and clean. Next, I'm going to put the, the nut in here, and I'll show you how I do that. In an attempt to keep the bolt straight, I put a nut on each end, and then line them up on both sides evenly. So I can tack this one in place and then weld it in place and keep everything straight. And of course we got to do this.
you got to stay on top of that because that will cause porosity in your weld because it's blocking your gas. I could spray that spray in there, but I use this stuff. Just plunge the into your gun in there and get a coating of that on there. This little tub of it will probably last me my lifetime. It just makes it easier to clean that stuff out. I bumped it and moved. Hard to do anything with these gloves. Just got to make sure when I start my arc, it's down on the inch plate there, and then I'll come up onto the nut, and it won't move it. Nice and straight. Okay, that's as far as I'm going to go with this one today. Let everything cool down. Then I got to make the boxes for the front here. See if you can see what I'm doing because I haven't spun it around. Yeah, you can. For the dies to set in. Let's get another one up here and finish it up. That didn't take too long. Okay, there you go. Boy, that was fun. I really enjoy fabbing stuff together and taking just chunks of steel and welding them up and putting them together and making something out of them. I, I just really enjoy that. I have a, two more of these, but I don't have the bases yet. So I need to burn the bases for those. This was the fun part. The next part is building the boxes that go on the front and getting those welded on there straight and square and true to each other. That's going to be work. That's not the fun part. This was, this was fun. I think I'm going to end this video here and then we'll fiddle around with the boxes another day because I'm going to go in the house Take it easy. I'm just going to let these set here and cool off. Thanks for watching.